was not a mic drop. <laughs> All right, good morning everybody. I always feel like it's not quite loud enough. Can everybody hear me okay? How about you, Gregory? You hear me back there? All right, good deal. If everybody wants to grab a seat, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Of course, you don't have to sit, but if you would like to. Uh, welcome to Freshwater Church. So good to have you here. Isn't it great to have just another day at the beach, right? That's all it is. But it's uh, what a privilege to come and worship Jesus freely, right? We don't always, you don't get that in every country, and we may not always have that in ours. So while well, you can, go to church. And here you are on vacation, those of you that are on vacation, and you're here at church. So we appreciate that. Um, my name is Tracy Gray, and I'm a church member. And... Uh, guest preacher here with Freshwater Church as well. Uh, however, today you get to hear from Pastor Wally. He's preaching this morning, so that's always good news. But uh, thank you so much for being here and joining us. I count it all joy to worship the Lord with you all this morning. So we do have an order of service today, so you just kind of get him an idea of what's going on. Uh, we have, after I pray, we're going to have two song, a couple of songs, and then we're going to have a scripture reading with uh, Gregory Zimmerman, then we'll have another song, then we're going to get the message from Pastor Wally, and an awesome surprise today, we are having open communion this morning, so be in prayer about that, and join us if you can. Uh, so if you are online this morning, go ahead and grab your juice and crackers and get ready and you can enjoy it with us as well. Then we'll come up with a last song and then our friend Michael Reidelbach will come up and give us some closing thoughts and announcements and close in prayer. So speaking of prayer, let's go ahead and pray over the message this morning, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for this day. It's just such a blessing, a glorious time to be able to be here this morning and I praise you. I praise you because you are so patient with your children, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come into repentance. Father, I thank you for your patience with me, and I pray that you would prepare our hearts now to receive the word and the change that it's going to bring, for our, bring to our lives. And Father, I pray this morning that the, we would receive the leading of the Holy Spirit, go throughout the pavilions this morning and get us ready and prepare us. I pray for the uh, music this morning, that it would just touch our hearts and get us ready. Lord, give Wally boldness and clarity this morning as he preaches and speaks, that he may be an effective messenger of your word. And if there's anyone here today or anyone online that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, the Lord, today is the day of salvation. And I pray today would be their day of their spiritual birth. And they would not leave here without accepting you into their life. And Father, I praise you again for just creating this beautiful location that we have here where we can have church, we can come together and worship and praise your name. And I just thank you again for what you're going to do for us today and do with us today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
All right, now my girlfriend's going to come up. <laughs> New Year's. How many years to this year? 30 years. My first wife. My first wife's coming up. I got to correct. 38 years. <laughs> my only. Okay. Hey. Thank you, babe. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I just wanted to say a brief word before I recite some scripture and we sing our songs this morning. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I have um, eternal, I, I asked Christ in my heart when I was 10 years old and I went to a camp in um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And the Lord um, worked it out where my mom would send me to that camp every summer for a few years while I was a little girl. And I want to encourage each of you to learn the Word of God, memorize the Word of God. The Bible tells us to hide God's Word in our hearts so that we might not sin against Him. So this morning I would like to um, recite Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Let's all stand, and we're going to sing this morning together. It's He Has Made Me Glad. And the sheet is in the front, but while we're singing, if you know the song, let's just turn to our neighbors and greet one another with a warm welcome. All right, sheet in the front. All right. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. Alright, and the next song we're going to sing is on page 14, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Oh, come on now. All right. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want 
to see you. All right, and now we have a scripture reading. Oh, sure will. Oh, here. You got it? How y'all doing? And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. If we do not give up, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, now the next song we're going to sing is page number 21, and that's Heart of Worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Amen. All right, we can all be seated, and Pastor Wally's coming on up to give us this message this morning. Thank you. I'll let you do the honors. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, good morning, everybody. It's so good to be here at the beach, to, and thank you so much for joining us to worship at Freshwater Church. Um, we're going to pray, and, and one of the things we're going to do is I want to pray for um, the Ukraine. Obviously, we there's a lot of people to pray for. And I have a friend. He's actually my first best friend. And he is, actually has a ministry that is in the Ukraine. And the people that are there on the ground in the Ukraine, they have made it to uh, the Polish border. So they made it into Poland, and they're on their way to Germany. And they're getting close. But uh, So we're going to pray for uh, Kostya and his family as they are making their trek. So it's kind of something personal, something to put a name to. There are people that are very uh, scared, hurting, and uh, so we need to pray for, for the Ukraine. And also pray for the service today. So let's open up with prayer. 
God, I thank you so much for this opportunity to, to pray to you, Lord. You're the everlasting God with strong, steadfast love for us, and you hear us and you listen to us. And Lord, we pray for this service, Lord. May we continue to glorify you and may we hear from you, Lord. Move me out of the way. Lord, right now we direct our hearts and our prayers to the people of Ukraine. Lord, there are people in danger and there are people that are evacuating and there are people that just need hope and peace. And Lord, you can bring that, Lord. And I pray that somehow you'll make sense out of this mess. And Lord, I pray that you'll be with Kostra and his family, Lord, to continue to get him safely up to Germany. Lord, there are people in place to help them. And Lord, what they have to recover, they've lost everything. And Lord, I pray that you'll restore them, restore their their peace, restore their uh, material things, and also restore their ministry. And Lord, I pray that they'll one day return to the Ukraine with a ministry that will continue to reach young people. Lord, we thank you so much for this time to pray. Lord, I pray that as we open up your word, that we'll be having open hearts and open ears. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are completing our series through the book of Philippians. Now, if you're new to Freshwater, we go through the, the book, uh, a book of the Bible, verse by verse, and this uh, we're going through the book of Philippians. And we're going to finish up with Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 23. Now, it's found on page 1083, or 1086 of your Beach Chair Bibles. And if you don't have a Bible or would like a Bible, please consider that Bible in your hands, yours. Uh, if we run out, that's a great problem to have, and we actually have two boxes that are on the way, so uh, those are in transit to us. So Philippians chapter 4, verses 14 through 23. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel... When I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a s sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God, who will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our Lord, to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ. The brothers who are with me, with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So these are encouraging words. And really, when you look at the whole book of Philippians, it is full of encouragement for believers, and especially for this church in Philippi. And we have three points from today's text. And it's, the first point is partnership. And then the second point is kingdom economy. And then lastly, relationship. You know, in the first three verses of our text, we find that, that, part, that this partnership has resonated and really has gone throughout the whole book. In fact, in, in verses... Uh, you know, 14 through 16 talks about it was kind of you to share my trouble. And this partnership in the gospel was a big deal to Paul, and it was a big deal to the Philippians. And he says, and you Philippians, you yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, so th they have a history, and we, from what we can tell, is at least it was a 10-year history that they've been working together. It was the first church plant in Europe. And the Philippians, you yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even the Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. And when you filter that through, these people were under persecution and they were also, they weren't a wealthy church, but they still were reaching out because they were partners in the gospel. It wasn't that they just wanted to help Paul, they also wanted to further the gospel and further the kingdom. And this long history just helped Paul as he ministered to the church. Even when he was in Corinth in another church, he sent, they sent support. In verses 15 and 16 of our text, he brags about the Philippians. And, and I can just see him pointing his finger and say, You guys, you guys, you know you Philippians, you guys are taking care of so many people. And, and he was just really bragging on them. And he points out 
that you know they've helped even in Thessalonica, which was about a hundred miles west. So even when you know they were, he was in Thessalonica, they still made way to get support to him. And and I, I googled it. I, I googled everything, but I googled just how long it would take a person to walk from Philippi to Thessalonica. It would take thirty hours of nonstop walking. And I was thinking, yeah, that's probably a, at least a, a probably one to two day journey. Ease, probably two days at least. And so somebody made sure that there was that he had what he needed. And that's just amazing that these people were doing that. And imagine how Paul had to feel when knowing that his friends in the faith were just still supporting him and encouraging him. Just the encouragement alone of what they received. They went to such great lengths to help him get what he needed. And this kind of partnership, it, and it goes, it's way beyond financial support. This is encouragement. This is supplies. This is just having what they, what he needed. And I, and I shared Philippians 1, 3 through 5 last week. And it's, I think, appropriate to share it again this week. It says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you. So this is the kind of feelings that Paul had for the people at Philippi. He said, you know, every time I think of you, I just thank God. He's always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So he's, he's kind of probably, have you ever written a letter and just recalled to the person as you're writing that letter and you're just thinking about all the past, what they've done and, and, and the good things and when you're writing in this letter, well, that's what he was doing. He was writing this letter and he was just thinking about the Philippians and where was he when he was writing this letter? He was in jail. He was in prison. But he was thinking these, he said, man, these are Philippians are great people. They're my friends. And, and this partnership was deep. And in this partnership in the gospel, we talk about the gospel. We, we talk about the gospel every Sunday. But what is the gospel? Well, if you look technically in the Greek, it's good, you know, good message or good news. But what's the good news? Well, it's really good news. You know, the news is that God sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to die for us. That you know, we're separated, unfortunately, by our sin. And, and as we're separated from Him, you know, we needed a way to get to God. And Jesus Jesus is that way. He bridged the gap. And I remember, I don't know if you know, heard of Andy Stanley, but he's a pastor in Atlanta. And when long, long time ago, because I'm old, he was a youth pastor. And when he was a youth pastor, he told us kind of how to share our faith. I was a teenager. And so Andy was saying, all right, he said, we're going to start with some bad news. And he thought that the bad news is pretty bad. He said, we're sinners. So okay, that's bad news. He said, but wait, it gets worse. I said, oh, it gets worse. He said, you know, we, we deserve death. And so that, and that means we're separated from God forever. So oh, that's really bad. He's but there's good news. I said, what's the good news? And and so we're learning how to share our faith. And he said, well, the good news is that Jesus came to make a way for us to go to heaven. And I said, okay. And he said, and guess what? The good news gets even better. I said, it gets even better than that. And he said, not only do we get to go to heaven, so we get to live forever because it's eternal life that he gives us. And that's the gospel. The gospel of the good news is that there is a way to get to God. And it's through Jesus. You know, and when you really surrender to the gospel, when you surrender your life to Jesus, it changes everything. It changes how you look at life. It changes how you do life. It changes everything in your life. And Paul, he was changed, and the Philippians were changed, and their mission in life changed because of the power of God shown through the gospel. And their mission changed to being just getting through life. And for, for Paul, it was he was a zealot, and he was going to kill as many Christians as he could. His mission changed from killing Christians to making Christians, to leading people to Christ. And the gospel, it changes the course. It changes the purpose of our lives. And like Paul in the Philippians, it changes, if we are born again, if we are part of the, and part of the gospel, it changes how we look at life. And that brings us to our second point, which is kingdom economy. Philippians 4, 17-20 says, Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment. And more, I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice, acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. 
you know, what kingdom economy is just changing how you look at stuff. What's important to you. And I remember when I was growing up, um, I loved bir- my birthday and I loved Christmas. And I was a kid, I loved presents, but for me, that's one of my love languages. Just little little gifts. It can be just a note and, and I, it thrills my soul. And in fact, one of my favorite childhood memories is I was in kindergarten and my mom said, hey, there's something waiting for you on your pillow. I said, great. Well, it was a teddy bear. I still remember that. And somewhere in my sword stuff in Georgia, I've got that teddy bear. But it is, it's precious to me and, and but it, it changed you know as we get older we kind of change a little bit but I remember looking underneath the Christmas tree and looking for my name and I'd see my name and say oh that, that present's for me and then I would be all excited about it and then I remember I became a Christian at the age of 12 and something just kind of changed it was just a little different and so as I was looking at it, I said, you know, something's missing, I, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Well, then I, I grew and grew in Christ, and then at 17, I was able to, I had a job. And, uh, and, and I had this first job, and, and my excitement changed from what I was going to get to what I was going to give. And so I was excited to see my name on the, you know, to mom, to Linda, or to whoever from, my name is Wilson, I go by Wally. But and I was like, I'm excited to see this, and I couldn't wait for Christmas to come. And my family is really small. My dad died when I was a baby, so it was just my mom and my sister and me. And so we're sitting around Christmas morning, and we hand out the presents, and I handed my mom her present, and I handed my sister hers, and they opened it, and my mom had a pair of shoes that she'd been wearing for a long time and I had a a study Bible for my sister that she wanted but we sat there and we cried it was happy tears but it was so special and my my shift changed my my focus changed and I had this kingdom economy I had this kingdom view that it's not about giving I mean about getting it's about giving and I remember just watching them and we cried and, and what I valued changed and it all changed really because of Jesus and you know Paul when he was writing Philippians and the Philippians themselves they got it they understood about what was really important in the kingdom economy and what I mean by that is as we enter into a relationship with God through Jesus what how we look at stuff it just changes so things that were once important may not be as important because Jesus changes those things. And Paul reminded the Philippians in verse 17, he said, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. You know, Paul was grateful. He was thankful for this gift, but he was really concerned with promoting the gospel and the credit that would be given to the church in Philippi. So think about this. He said, you know, this is great, but I just want to make sure that one day in heaven you're going to be known as the people who helped further the kingdom of God. He said, this is not about me. This is about what God is doing in you. And and that's the kingdom economy. We understand when we become a part of the kingdom economy, we, we get focused on what God wants and furthering His kingdom. That's what we get to be about. And I pray that one day we'll be shown you know, as faithful to the Lord. You know, Paul knew that the gift would help advance the gospel, but that would be an eternal benefit to the Philippians. What was a temporary gift would have everlasting eternal consequences. And that's the thing. Everything matters. And when we become a Christian, we begin, we begin to see that, wow, everything matters, and I need to do something to make a difference for the kingdom of God. In the kingdom economy, everything counts. Everything can make a difference. Now, Paul saw the spiritual side of the gifts that were given to him, and, and so he turns a little bit from the material. He says, all right, let's, he said, I've received full payment, and more, I am well supplied. So having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. You know, he, Paul practically acknowledged that he had received full payment. And it's a term, when you look in ancient receipts, it means, you know, paid in full, just like for rent or taxes. And, you know, he let them know that Epaphroditus, a friend in the faith, delivered this gift. And it was more than just practical, though. Paul looked at the gift as, you know is more than just a, a money gift. You know, in the world economy, it would just be considered a financial transaction. 
but in the kingdom economy, their gift was more. This is what Paul called it. He said it was a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Because they were changed by Christ and they looked at this opportunity as something different. Whenever we give, we serve, or do anything for God, you know, it's an act of worship. Whenever we do anything for Him, it's an act of worship. And being a part of the kingdom means that we look at our time, we look at our talent, we look at our treasure, we look at everything that we do as a resource for God to use and not just for us, our personal gain. And the act of worship is where we give and we serve, we do things for God in His name. And what happens is, guess what? It changes us. As we serve, it just changes us from the inside out because we're doing what God wants us to be doing. And as we make sacrifices to the Lord, those sacrifices will one day be all taken care of. I mean, I don't know if you... I mean, my goodness. Jesus, when he, there's going to be a day when we get welcomed by Him. And he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's my prayer. I can't wait to see him face to face. And he says, well done. That's going to make everything that we've done for him worth it. Just those words alone. In that in this kingdom economy, believers move from being anxious and worrying over material things to trusting that God's going to take care of us. And that's why Paul said, And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And last week I shared a story just how God took care of us when we were, my wife and I, Rob and I, we were newlyweds, hadn't been married too long, and paycheck was coming, but it wasn't there yet. And groceries showed up on our doorstep. God just did those kinds of things over and over. And we can't fall into the trap of thinking that as, and as long as we, you know, as long as we're giving, as long as we're serving, you know, then God's going to take care of us. Because that's, that's not the way it is. He takes care of us because it's in His nature. He takes care of those who are His. Yes, we serve God with everything in our lives. And He does, He provides everything for us. Think of what He has given us. My goodness, look at this creation. Being here, I mean, we're here on, some of you are here on vacation. That's provision. Some of us live here. That's provision. I mean, all of these things, God has taken care of. God is a provider, and in His provision, it's not, not because we do something for Him. You know, and sometimes, I used to have that kind of mentality towards God. I thought that, okay, you know, I owe God, so I've got to do some things for Him. And that's not it. I do things for Him out of worship. And that's when we change that, when we shift our focus from doing things just to earn brownie points with God to doing things to worship Him. That's amazing what it does and it transforms our lives and how we do things. You know, the riches found in Jesus, they're not earthly. It's not earthly wealth because what is most valuable to God, think about this, what is most valuable to God in His kingdom? It's the things that will bring Him glory. And guess what? That's us. We're the ones that are most valuable to Him. God loves us so much that we have great value in the eyes of God. Earlier in Philippians, Paul wrote, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. So he was praying this for his friends in Philippi. He says, So that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. You're filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Why? Why we do all of it? To the glory and praise of God. That's why we do everything that we do. At least that's what it should be. Everything we do in life should be for the glory and praise of God. You know, throughout our study of Philippians, we've repeatedly said this. It's all about Jesus. Yes, and that is the absolute truth. But we could also say it's all about Jesus and God's glory. You know, and that's why in the kingdom economy, you know, Paul said in verse 20, he said, To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. He said, you know, everything is about His glory and, and doing what He wants us to do. And as Paul closes these thoughts to his beloved friends, he points them to, to God and His glory. You know, and we are captured by the love of Christ. Have you ever been captured by Christ? When you just catch those glimpses of Him, when you're having your quiet times, you're reading the Word or you're praying and He's just captured your heart. You know, when, when we're captured by the love of Christ, He becomes the object of our affection. And He takes over. And not, not in a controlling, like, i got to take over. He just he woos us in because that's who He is. He's our Savior. And when we're captured by that, 
he becomes that object. And Paul talks about the surpassing worth of, of knowing Jesus. And he said that, you know, whatever he goes through in life, it was all just garbage compared to knowing Jesus. He says, whatever gain I had, this is Philippians 3, 7 and 8. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. He didn't care if he lost everything. As long as he had Jesus, that was enough. And he understood that when we make our lives all about Jesus, that brings glory to God. And that's why we are created. We're made for a relationship with Him and we're made to glorify Him in everything that we do. And when our lives and our words, the things we say, when they point to Jesus, when we share the gospel and share in the gospel, and it, that promotes God's kingdom. God's kingdom spreads and grows. When we become believers, you know, we're brought you know, into this kingdom of God and our purpose changes from living for ourselves to where we live for God. And as we live for Him in everything that we do, in everything... You know, the Bible says, you know, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. When we're brought into that, it just changes everything. And as we live for Him in everything that we do, our lives overflow what God is doing in us. See, that's the thing about it. The more we pour the Lord in and as we spend our time with Him and we praise Him and we worship Him and we live for Him, we read His Word, all of a sudden that starts coming out. That starts leaking out of us because we're perfect, imperfect, I mean, we're very imperfect vessels, but out of us leaks the Lord in His presence. And the things of God's kingdom at the end of the day, that's what will truly last. The things of God. That lasts forever. And as believers, we're called to be a part of this heavenly kingdom and to make it grow through the help of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're to be all about God's kingdom. Now our last point is simply relationship. You know, Paul had a very personal relationship with the church at Philippi. And the last verses of Philippians, they really kind of reflect how sentimental Paul was concerning his friends and he, as he extended these greetings to the entire body of Christ. You know, the, the gospel united the church and, and from the gospel, deep relationships were formed. You know, when we have something in common, and that's a, the cool thing as believers, we come together and who do we have in common? Jesus. You know, don't you love it when you meet somebody and they have a, a friend that's your friend and y'all didn't know that y'all knew each other? And it's like, oh yeah, I know them. Well, that's the way it is with us. Oh, you, you know Jesus? I know Jesus too. And all of a sudden, we have something in common. And that's the way it was in the church. And Paul understood this. And then when he had this greeting, he said that, that you know, what the gospel did was it united the church. And this deep relationship was formed. And believers are, you know, first were called into relationship with Jesus. And then were called into relationship with each other. You know, the book of Philippians, it closes with these words. The, the last words says, say this. It said, Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. That's how he closes this fantastic letter that he wrote to the Philippians. He started Philippians with grace and he concludes with grace. In the beginning of Philippians, he said, Paul and Timothy, he said, we're not alone in this. And see, we're not alone in ministry. To Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who were at Philippi with the overseers and deacons, deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Philippians is really, the, the book of Philippians is full of encouragement for his friends in the faith. And these, these themes of, of hardship, of humility, love, service, hope beyond suffering, God's glory, all of these things are contained in this book. But Paul's love and service and hope beyond suffering, this was all about pointing people to Jesus. And Paul's introduction was kind of broadly speaking to all the saints at Philippi, but he gets really specific in his closing by he, he tells the readers to greet every saint in Jesus. He, he realized that we're not alone in this. 
And when he was concluding the letter, he includes those who were with him while he was in Rome. And I can see that, you know, Paul, that thinking of the saints of the church and also those around him, and he makes sure to include them in his final greetings. And verse 23 is significant, and I want you to hear this. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. You know, the closing reminds me of, you know, how we have... Have you ever had a phone call and you kind of... this I'm you know, talking about long distance, so I'm old. Remember when we had the long distance phone calls and you didn't talk to that person a lot, and especially in the family? And so all of a sudden you're, you're kind of surrounded by the phone and everybody's around you trying to say hey to the person in California or wherever they are. That's kind of what Paul was doing here. He says, you know, I've got these people around me. We're all saying... We're saying hello. We're saying goodbye. This is our greeting. That's what Paul is doing. Now we do it on speakerphone. So I got you on speaker, so that's a little different now. But while Paul was in prison in Rome, I mean, think about it. He was in prison, but he was also a part of, he was around Caesar's household. So the people that reported directly to Caesar, the leader of all of Rome, that's a big deal. And so he says, all the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. You know, and the most the greeting most likely included the imperial guard. Now the imperial guard, they were like the elite guards that took care of Caesar. And so in the first part of Philippians, he mentions these guys. He says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me, he was suffering. And he says, I'm, I'm in jail. I'm suffering. But this has happened. has really served to advance the gospel. He says, so look, the kingdom economy. He says, I, I look at this different. It's, it's good stuff. He says, so it's become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. So even in his imprisonment, he was pointing people to Jesus. So the closing is a reminder that the gospel has spread not only through Rome and through Philippi, but also to the household of Caesar. And that there are believers in, in the highest reaches of the empire. Now, I have a similar kind of story, not really a story, but I have some friends who have done ministry in North Korea. Well, North Korea is one of the most isolated countries, and they are very strict. They don't allow any kind of religion that's not worship of their leaders. And I have some friends that actually have been involved in some ministry over there. And much of the work is done in secret. But just like it was a surprise for there to be Christians and believers in Caesar's household, I was surprised to find out that there are believers in North Korea. There are actually some believers that are kind of high up in the government. Now, we can't really reveal that because that would not be good for them. But my goodness, this kind of stuff was happening in, in Paul's day and it's happening in our day as well. We've got to remember to pray for these kind of folks. It's important for us to, to remember the relationships that we have with one another in the body of Christ. Not, and not just Freshwater. You know, we have a very small church. We have a very unique body of believers here on St. John. And we're, we're small, but we have a lot of people that consider us kind of you know, second church. And it's always refreshing when we have friends of the faith join us for worship. When we have people will come back. It's always so cool to see people when they come back. And when they come back, they, they, you guys are just a part of our story. We've had some people, we've named our uh, Parsonage Freshwater Oasis. We've actually had a, some people come and actually help with the, do some work there. I mean, it's just, that kind of stuff is really cool and part of being part of the kingdom of God. And it's also out of relationship that we have for each other. And, you know, what binds us all together? It's Jesus. He's the one that puts us all together. And Paul prayed for the unity of the body. He, in another church, is the church in Ephesians, in Ephesus, he talks about this, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, so he was in prison still, he said, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. So this was his prayer for the church, and this is a prayer for us today. So there's only one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And that's the thing about it. We're all saved by grace. Those of us who have accepted Christ, we're saved by grace. And when we talk about witnessing and sharing our faith, it's, all it is is one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. That's our story. 
And as we have this commonality together with Jesus, we've all been saved by this grace. And we join together. We join in the purpose of spreading the gospel to increase the kingdom. And that's what, you know, in this relationship, I love the relationship we have in the kingdom of God. And when you guys come and visit, it encourages us like crazy. And it's so cool to see people not only, you know, come come once, but you guys come back again. That's even cooler to have people return. And we love that. And so as I, as I close out today, let's remember these three points of partnership, that we're partners together in the gospel. You know, kingdom economy. In the kingdom, we're to be about His glory and spreading His kingdom. And lastly, relationship. Believers in Jesus, we have a relationship with each other through the gospel, through Jesus. And out of that relationship, the gospel is spread, making the kingdom grow. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I, I, I shared earlier what the gospel is. Well, see, God created us for a relationship with Him. And earlier I, I, I told you about that you were separated by sin and God made a way through Jesus for us to know Him. And you can accept Him as your Savior. And it's, if, you, if you say a prayer and it sounds like this, it's not a magic prayer. You've got to mean these words. And it's simply a prayer that says this. God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I need forgiveness. And I know that I can't come to you because of my sin, but you came to me through Jesus. And Jesus, you died for the, on the cross for me, and I thank you for that sacrifice. And when you died for me, you forgave my sins. Lord, I trust in you, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Lord, I give you my life. Fill me with your eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, your presence inside of me. I give my life to you. I follow you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, prayed something like that, then you have entered into the kingdom of God, and you are a child of God. So, you know, believers, we do share in our relationship with Jesus. And so today we're going to do something. We're going to do something that brings binds us together even closer. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper or communion. Um, Jesus commanded believers to do this, and why do we do it? We do it in remembrance. We remember what He did. That's the only reason we do this. This act is a way for us to worship Jesus and we thank Him for what He did for us. You know, at Freshwater Church, we have an open communion. And that means that if you have trusted in Jesus alone for your salvation, you can join us as we pass the, the elements. Uh, no one's paying attention to those who don't take the cups. So we're not looking around and keeping score. Um, but there's no judgment here. You know, some, some won't take it because maybe they have some unconfessed sin in their lives. Some may have a broken relationship with someone. And they need to make it right. You know, some may not take the bread and cup because they just they're more comfortable in their home church, um, and that's up to, to. There's nothing wrong with that. This is a personal act of worship between you and God. Now, as you get your cup, just peel that film away and hold on to the wafer. Okay, and as you hold on to that wafer, we're going to um, continue. As we as we peel back this little clear, it's a little tricky. I remember when these first came out. Well, what what I'm holding here is just a picture. It's just a symbol. This is a reminder of what Jesus did for us. This is His body. And out of Matthew 26, I'm going to give you direction when to, when to take it. But Matthew 26, imagine the upper room. Jesus is surrounded by His friends. They break the bread together, and he, he gets this bread, and he breaks it, and, and he says, you know, this is my body that I've given for you. And that's what this is. This is an act of worship for us to simply remember what he did for us. This is Matthew 26. It says, Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, Take, eat, this is my body. And 
as you peel back this other piece of film, you know, hold, hold your cup and, you know, it, this is just a symbol. This is a reminder of the blood that Jesus shed for us, that when He died on the cross for us, He, had, he, he did that for us. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let's, let's close in prayer. God, we thank you so much for this ability to worship you. And Lord, we celebrate communion. The Lord's Supper, my, what a reminder of what you did for us. Jesus, you went to Calvary for us, for me. And I just thank you so much for the sacrifice of giving your life, your perfect life, for imperfect me, for imperfect us. Lord, I pray that we will just be transformed by the gospel, that we will be gospel-minded people, that we'll be kingdom-minded people, that we will serve you in everything that we do. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your word and, Lord, for this to celebrate the Lord's Supper, to know that you did this thousands of years ago for us to remember you, and we do. We remember you and we thank you. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for this time together with our friends. In Jesus' name, amen. If everybody would stand and sing with me. We're going to be on page 20. Uh-oh. Just quit. Thank you. All right. It's page 20. This is my desire to all going to come up and give us our closing announcements. You may sit down if you want. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try that again with a little bit more gusto. Good morning. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Love God, love people. Four words. That's the vision of this church. Simply said, four words, love God, love people. And today we've demonstrated that in both ways. We're here to worship our God, so we've loved God. And we've gathered as in fellowship with each other to boost each other. And I'd like to see the hands of all the visitors here today. Look at that. Look around you. Isn't that wonderful? Special, special thank you to you. Because you had a lot of things you could be doing today. Even if oh, it's a little windy, it's still a lot better than ice and snow. And you could be doing those things. But instead, you chose to be here with us. And by doing that, you have encouraged us and uplifted our service to you. So thank you so much. We'd like to keep that relationship going. We don't want this to be a one and done. We'd like to keep in communication with you. I, Vanna is back there by the offering box. And she is holding in her hand a contact information card, which we would encourage you if you want to stay in contact with us to fill that out. We promise you we will not sell your information to anybody. 
but we will use it to reach out to you with a newsletter and keep you in tune with what's going on here in our church when you're not here. And you heard Wally refer to it. We'd like to become your second church. We know you have a mainland church, but this would be your second church. So we would love you to do that if you would share that information with you. If giving is a part of your worship service, we have an offering box back there. And Linda is showing you the uh, Linda slash Vanna. She goes under both names. She has a dual identity. <laughs> That's because she's on the lamb from the IRS and she doesn't want them to find her. <laughs> so you fill out the card there and we will keep track of your donations and every January we'll feed that back to you. We do have Bible study. On Wednesday, we have one at 6 o'clock in the Cruise Bay part of the island at Wally's house. So if you want to join us, Linda is holding up the, the guide for that particular lessons. And you can pick one of those up back there, and Wally will tell you how to get to his house. We also have a second one on Thursday, also at 6 o'clock, at Linda Nye's house in Coral Bay. And we're doing a slightly different, she's holding up that one, a slightly different uh, study at the same time. So if one of those two fit for you, come. We'd love to have you. We've got room for all of you. Last thing I want to share with you, and it, well, I was going to point to it, but the wind won't allow it to stand up, is you heard us talking about Oasis. We were blessed about six months ago to find a building, and we were able to bid on it. We were able to secure the bid, and we raised $350,000 in less than four months, and we purchased it. Now that's a, about a couple hundred thousand dollars under what it's, a, what it's worth. Now the good news is that's phase one and it's completed. We own the building, but if you get a building of a couple hundred thousand dollars, oh, the rain never rains here. I'll give you a second to get out of the weather. But when it does rain, you know it. Do what? Amen. Where I was going to tell you about is phase two. Since we bought it and got it so much under its appraised value, guess what that means? We have to do something to upgrade it so we can use it. The purpose of Oasis, as the name implies, is to be a spiritual refuge. In addition to being a parsonage for our lead ma uh, pastor and his family, it will be a place to hold Bible study, a place to hold counseling, a place to hold discipleship, ministration, and, a, and it has four walls on it so you stay dry. If you would like to be a part of that, in any way, shape, or form, through your prayers, through your financial contribution, or if you want to come over and volunteer as part of it, I'd encourage you to take a look at the, uh, once we can hold it up for you, take a look at the pictures of it, and let Wally or Wade, Wade, hold your hand up. Wade was up here a few minutes ago. See Wade, and we'll put you to work and, and, and do that encouraging. I want to say thank you again to you. It's just such a pleasure to have you here. I'd like to say the weather was better, but it'll change in the Caribbean. We have food. So the fellowship will continue in the pavilion across the way, and we have some very good food. We'd ask you to join us for lunch and spend a little bit of time extending the service. So thank you again for being here. God bless. Nobody wants to get out in the rain. No, <laughs> <laughs>
anyone wants to help pack up the Jeep, everything's got to go back in, see Wade or PJ. They're the ones working real hard. Feel free to help. Thank you.